Continuing on, we are talking about creating the right type of interface in different kinds of fibers. In this case, we are talking about carbon fibers. Um, what is special about carbon fibers is that um, it is inhomogeneous through its cross section, but it has got basal planes aligned parallel to the surface. For example, I think I talked about it earlier. If you have, say, for example, uh, a roll of paper, it is rolled uh, into, a, into a kind of a circular shape. That's what you would find in the case of the carbon fibers. Uh, it has got graphitic, and along that paper, you have a very graphitic type of a structure. So it is very strong in that direction, and maybe in the uh, longitudinal direction also, but in the thickness direction, it is not as strong. Uh, so it usually is very weak in shear. So the reason why we want to have a, a specific type of an interface is so that you have or you can improve the properties as best as you can in the shear direction or in the shear for shear properties. So typically it is very hard to bind with a matrix because the surfaces are uh, non-reactive. So you have to make it suitable for reaction with the matrix. So that's one of the reasons why we want to have a specific type of an interface. So in order to get that, you would typically do a surface treatment, which increases the surface roughness, and it also increases the surface reactivity. So this can be done in two ways. One is by oxidative. So you create a gaseous phase where you can oxidize in air, oxygen, or highly reactive oxygen or carbon dioxide or catalytic oxidation, or you would do chemical. Um, with, and most of the time it is done with a, a dilute solution of nitric acid. Or you can also do with uh, hydrogen peroxide, potassium permanganate, sodium chlorate, chromic acid, etc. Or you may also uh, do it in electrochemical methods. There are um, other types of surface treatments which are non-oxidative in nature. So like, you know, polymer grafting, deposition of pyrolytic carbon, and viscarization. And now, more recently, you would find that you can grow different kinds of fibers, um, uh, reactive fibers like carbon nanotubes, not reactive, um, just carbon nanotubes, you grow that and that will react and act like a Velcro between different layers of the composite material. The viscarization is done by a chemical vapor deposition process, which can improve the interlaminar shear strength of the composite. So that is one big issue with most of the composite materials, most of the polymer matrix composite materials, especially those with carbon fibers. And you would do that, you would overcome that, or you would mitigate that by having whiskers grown on the fiber surface. But what is the problem with viscarization? Viscars are not, health-wise, they are not a very good thing to have. So you got to be extremely careful in dealing with these kinds of materials. So typically, they would do oxidative treatment, uh, which would increase the fiber surface area, increase the number of surface groups that can react with the matrix, which can then, in turn, improve the interlaminar shear strength, but it increases the amount of surface defects, which is not always a good thing. Liquid phase oxidation is also done. So typically you would react it with, um, uh, with a dilute nitric acid, which can oxygenate and create oxygenated surface groups that can then react with 
the matrix material or you know you would create what are called hydroxyl groups that can improve the uh, interlaminar shear strength so there is a relationship between roughness of the fiber surface and the interlaminar shear strength in different carbon epoxy systems so these are the matrices and the 700 is the uh, the fiber so these are the different fibers so you increase uh, surface roughness and it drastically increases the interlaminar shear strength which is a needed property for these composite materials to be used in engineering applications so what are the typical structural defects that you find in polymer matrix composites first of all you would find resin rich regions second of all you can find voids because you are not able to completely eliminate the gases that are formed during the reaction with the matrix or the curing of the matrix uh, so you would typically process these materials under vacuum conditions because you need a very low void content for improved interlaminar shear strength also if there is a difference between the thermal expansion coefficient of the matrix and the fibers what happens is that the matrix and fibers will heat and cool down at different rates that can cause uh, formation of several micro cracks in the matrix material which can then in turn reduce the interlaminar shear strength or you can also have debonding and delaminated regions or if your alignment of the fibers is not perfect or is not ideal then you can also get uh, structural defects in the material so and especially when you go to very thick laminates um, some of the matrix can flow out of the area and it can create a variation in fiber volume fraction between one part of the composite to another and that can also cause defects in the composite material what are the causes for internal stresses in composite especially if you have differences in thermal expansion coefficient between the matrix and the fibers or uh, which can be as a result of a constraint on the free expansion of a phase or a component then you can have residual stresses and the most important residual stress is due to thermal mismatch between the matrix and the fibers you can also have a difference in how the matrix and the fibers react with moisture so that can also lead to different kinds of uh, residual stresses in the material moisture is a big problem in especially in polymer matrix composite because both the polymers and the polymer matrix composites can absorb moisture and if you have natural polymeric fibers then they can absorb more moisture than synthetic polymeric fibers in general the absorbed moisture can degrade the mechanical properties and if you have sunlight also being um, shown up on the composite material that can synergistically decrease the properties of the composite material so this can then affect properties such as stiffness strength glass transition temperature etc so you typically want to decrease the ingress of moisture into the composite material the moisture diffusion is a function of the type of fiber the volume fraction of fibers the humidity temperature volume fraction of voids and any additives that might be uh, attract the moisture to come inside the composite material and 
it is typically a Fickian diffusion process. So as a function of a square root of time, it goes up and then it starts leveling off. And so you might have, so this is the schematic of that, and it can be as much as six, seven percent, or it can be like, you know, one percent and things like that. So it typically it can affect the properties of the composite material. So I would like you to take a look at um, the surface treatment of carbon fibers. I will be uploading them. Please take a look at them and discuss why surface treatment might be desirable in the case of carbon fibers and whether this would be possible in the case of carbon nanotubes and what would be the treatment that would be like a counterpart in the case of carbon nanotubes. A hint is that it could be functionalization. So by functionalizing, you are creating reactive groups attached to the carbon nanotubes. But the flip side is that when you do that, you are decreasing the properties of the carbon nanotubes, which then really doesn't contribute anything to the betterment of the properties of the composite material. So when moisture absorption follows the Fick's law, then we call the phenomenon Fickian diffusion. And it can also vary from that, and it can be referred to as non-Fickian or anomalous diffusion. So Fickian diffusion is a case when the absorption or desorption is linear with respect to the square root of time. And generally, this is true to about 60% of maximum absorption, but after that, it approaches the um, absor gain in mass in an asymptotic manner. There can also be non Fickian diffusion, which is mainly due to the viscoelastic nature of the polymers and the presence of any cracks that can cause non Fickian diffusion. So this can be complicated further, especially when the composite is immersed in water or it is constantly exposed to water and leaching of the components can occur, which can complicate the matters further. You can measure the moisture absorption in composites, especially in fibers and things like that, by looking at stress induced by refringence. And so this is a single fiber epoxy composite with a very thin layer of epoxy on, on a single strand of carbon fiber. And then you immerse that uh, in water. So if you look at it like this, it gives you uh, a fringe pattern, but when you start immersing it for more and more time, this causes some kind of a stress on the fibers that can result in a different kind of a birefringence. So you can see the difference and compare that with the properties of the composite material. And if you go to more and more immersion, it can cause some kind of a tensile stress in the fiber which is so large that it can break. So when moisture absorption is quite considerable, that can lead to reduction, considerable reduction in mechanical properties of the composite material itself. So let me stop here for this class, I mean for this part of the class, and then I will continue for, for uh, tomorrow.